February 3rd, 2022, this week at Bungie. This is a massive one. I'm going to get through it as fast as I can. There's a lot of important things to talk about. They first start off with Bungie joining Sony. It's a big deal. It's not going to be the focus of today's video. We've talked about it in the past, and you've seen it all around Reddit, Twitter, and more. Let's start with the Enclave. Crafting a legendary weapon from scratch isn't a simple matter. Finding patterns. Think weapon blueprints. Collecting materials, building your weapon is the starting point. After crafting your tool of destruction, you'll be able to unlock its full potential through combat. In the first and second missions of Witch Queen, free to all players, Guardians will uncover the Deep Sight ability. Then we're going to the Enclave. They're going to start us off with the Glaive. All the necessary materials are going to be provided for the first initial craft of this Glaive, and a short tutorial on the loop. And as they said, we have set weapons and archetypes from the start. More are going to be added in the future. Patterns are the first requirement. You can get some of them through quest completions, completing various gameplay objectives. Once you've earned the desired pattern, it can be crafted at any time with the required materials. They show a shaped weapon come to pass, auto rifle. And what's really cool is they show the range, impact, stability, handling, the actual stat numbers. Now maybe, just maybe, if not, I hope they can add it in, recoil direction. That's a big thing for arrowhead break, counterbalance mods, things like that. But I love this right here. Then there's a big part of the loop. After completing your first glaive, randomly rolled weapons throughout the game have a chance to drop with the new ability, Deep Sight Resonance. This is for target specific traits. If you find a Deep Sight Legendary Auto Rifle with Rampage, you can complete an objective, extract the essence of the perk, then craft a weapon with Rampage or another perk that has increased damage. So it shows that when you're holding the Deep Sight Resonance weaponry, it has the red outline borders. This is a picture of an SMG. We have a 600 RPM Forensic Nightmare. This weapon possesses a resonance detectable by your Deep Sight ability. Use this weapon in combat, complete activities in order to attune it, and exact materials useful for shaping weapons. This is the Come to Pass Auto Rifle High Impact. It looks like we have a couple new perks there. We'll see what those turn into. But this weapon is full progress, ready to be extracted. Like current weapons, not every weapon pattern will be compatible with every trait. But you'll have a good list of traits to mix and match as you customize a given weapon to your desired specifications. And by that, they mean that you're not going to get a hand cannon with lasting impression. We know that. They said, but it doesn't stop there, though. Through the Enclave, you'll be able to kick things up a notch and enhance your trades to strengthen their flavor. Now they start getting into the cost. Once a weapon is crafted, Guardians will begin to increase its level by using it in activities, defeating enemies. And that's where the bulk of the crafting playtime is going to be. The more you use the weapon, the faster you'll unlock its full potential. Enhanced stats and traits can be unlocked when reaching higher levels, granting slight bonuses to your weapon's capabilities. Our goal through this system is to give players a reason to invest in their weapons, far beyond what masterworking could ever offer in the past. So we have the Resonant Alloy, takes 20 of those, 40,000 Glimmer, 12 Enhancement Cores. I, right now, on my character, I only have like 50 cores. So I encourage all of you to do some core farming, and I really hope that they have more ways to get cores as the Witch Queen drops. Now, they also say that you can shape your weapon and then reshape it. You can fully craft it, but if you want to mix up the components of your weapons after you finish the craft, you can switch up the barrel, the mag, the traits. That way you don't feel like you're just locked down to one roll forever. That's a really nice addition. They talk about Hake, other foundries. Others may dabble in new weapons from Redacted. Could that be Tex Mechanica, Dato, or like whatever it is. We're excited to see which weapons you choose. Mementos. This stuff is layered, it's so cool. While the majority of your crafting experience will be dedicated to mixing, matching, and enhancing traits, there's an opportunity for a bit of customization when it comes to appearances and activity-specific trackers. One weapon memento will become available for players to earn through Gambit, unlocking a Gambit-themed appearance and tracker, rank up your weapon to max level, head back to the Enclave, apply your freshly earned memento for some sweet flair. More of these are going to come through Trials, Grandmaster Nightfalls. They have more plans for mementos down the line. Exotic Crafting. The upcoming Osteostriga Exotic SMG and three class unique exotic glaives can be crafted through the Enclave, once you find the respective patterns of course. So the Osteostriga, that's going to be a good one. If you can change the barrel, let's say it has 70 recoil direction, so arrowhead break would be perfect on that. If not, depending on how far you can craft it, you can make the SMG just killer for PvE or PvP. They say the exotic crafting is more about fine tuning something with a defined identity. Again, you can customize things like barrels or stocks while preserving the exotic look and feel. Looking for longer range? Maybe more handling? That's going to be great. With the Enclave, you can do just that. Tuning up, tuning down. They bring in one of the legends, Chris Proctor, to talk about the sandbox. And I am extremely excited about what we're about to talk about. I have a little bit of commentary for it. From Pinnacle to Pursuit Weapons, they go through how essentially the pinnacle weapons were a little bit too strong, whether it be Revoker, there was Reclusive Mountains Hop, but they were more so used in PvE, very unpleasant to play against, very strong. They moved away from the pinnacle weapons, but they like to take a moment to clarify the move. Now we have Pursuit Weapons for next season. 
The intent for Season 12 is that a Pursuit weapon should be a solid weapon, roughly 70% of a god roll in the archetype, with perk options that fit well with PvE and PvP. A little bit easier to get, not a huge grind. Good starter weapons for PvE, PvP, leaving space for weapons from pinnacle activities like Trials, Raids, Nightfalls to exceed the potential. But here's a quick breakdown of how each Pursuit weapon since Season 12 compares to the randomly rolled options currently in the game, like Adored, it's a good sniper, but there are better snipers shipped alongside it since. The Salvo, really good, obviously Chain Reaction, but there's other good ones like Truth Teller, Ignition Code, No Composure, again, Plug One, Glacioclasm with Reservoir Burst. They say with that, let's take a look at the Reckless Endangerment Pursuit Shotgun. It introduces the new Steady Hands perk for a massive handling boost after a kill, plus Snapshot. There are several other shotguns in this release that will be more sought after PvP and PvE-wise perks. And then we have Origin Traits, and this is one of the big things that I was wondering with them taking away the Master Working Orbs, the complete overhaul to how we get our weapons. Every weapon that's newer returning in Witch Queen will have an Origin Trait determined by the Source and a Third Column Trait, including all new Legendary Weapons and all returning Trials, Iron Banner, and Nightfall Weapons. Origin Traits! They're only going to appear on new drops of a weapon. They won't be retroactively added to old drops. And that kind of sucks, man, because a lot of weapons have done perk refreshes. Like, I have an Exile's Curse with Firmly Planted. They took that off. I, I, I could never get it again. Maybe I could craft it at a later date. Or some really good snapshot Vorpal Eye of Soul. It goes on, and I'm sure that you have a roll from Iron Banner, Trials, GMs, whatever it is. They're not going to have this new stuff, so you're going to have to grind new ones. Ugh, these traits vary in effect, but the guideline is that they either have high uptime or medium power effects or low uptime, high power. Some examples, Trials of Osiris, Alacrity, gain increased reload, stability, aim assist, and range when you're the last living member of your fire team or running solo. Plus 20 reload, plus 20 stability, plus 10 aim assist, plus 10 range. Solo, things like Lost Sectors Rumble, that's where it counts. Nightfall Strikes, Stunning Recovery. Stunning a champion partially refills your magazine and triggers health regeneration and improves recovery for a short duration. Grants 60 health instantly and plus 40 recovery for three seconds. That's huge. One quiet moment, the Crucible. Gains increased reload speed when out of combat. Plus 40 to the reload when you haven't dealt or received damage in four seconds. Just a fast reload, that's cool. Strikes, Vanguard, Vindication. Final blows of this weapon grant a small amount of health. Small equals seven health. And think about your modifiers where you have to go to the little pools to start your health recovery. This can probably bypass that. Anytime it makes sense, Due to the Sorcerer activity, a weapon will have multiple origin traits selectable, like Nightfall weapons can select between Nightfall and Vanguard, Trials of Osiris between Trials and Crucible. So yeah, maybe on your Igneous Hammer, well, which we're going to talk about in a moment, or your Eye of Soul Sniper Rifle, maybe you don't want that increased stat boost when you're the last living member alive, you just want to switch that to the plus 40 reload when you're not in combat, like, that's something the players are going to do. The Pursuit weapon, the Shotgun, can select between Gambit, Vanguard, and Crucible traits. Weapon Foundries! In Season 16, we're replacing the Old World Loot Pool with 12 new weapons in a style of the Destiny 2 Year 1 Foundry weapon sets. Three weapons from each, Suros, Omelon, Hake, and Vice, plus one weapon foundry for each Vanguard, Gambit, and Crucible. Each weapon will come with a foundry origin trait themed around the foundry's personality. Suros, Suros Synergy. Reloading grants this weapon bonus handling and reduces incoming flinch for a short time. Plus 40 handling, 20% flinch resistance for 6 seconds after a reload. So if that's combined with the passive stat of getting plus 40 reload when not in combat, you can just make sure that you fire one bullet, reload, and you have this 6 second buff of plus 40 handling and flinch resistance. Hockey Breach Armaments. This weapon does increased damage against vehicles, turrets, barricades, and stasis crystals. Turrets, including the Bleak Watcher, plus 15% to vehicles, 30% to structures and turrets. Omelon. Fluid Dynamics. Increased reload speed and stability for the top half of the magazine. So that's going to be very, very good with Under Pressure. Max plus 20 stability. Reload plus 30. Reduces as the magazine gets lower. So it starts off really stable. It's almost like tap the trigger in the beginning. That's really interesting. The Vice Stinger. Chance on damage to partially refill this weapon's magazine. That's good too. In addition to the Foundry Origin trait. Each Foundry's weapon perk pulls lean into that Foundry's identity. Big damage for Hake, consistency for Suros, ability tie-ins, weird stuff for Omelon, never stop firing for Vice. Picture the upcoming Vanguard Shotgun, which is a slug, Crucible Hand Cannon, which looks like a 140 Omelon, and a Gambit Auto Rifle, which appears to be a Hake one. Foundry weapons that drop from a source aside from the World Pool can switch between the Foundry trait and the Source trait. Okay, so they don't double up. 
but it's giving you more options. So like I said earlier with the Soros thing, it doesn't look like you can use them together, but you can use either or, which is good, which is good. We know we haven't brought back all of your favorite Foundry weapon types, but don't worry. You can expect to see Weapon Foundries receive new additions each season for the year following the Witch Queen with some fun surprises thrown in later in the year. They talk about kill trackers. Essentially, they see no reason to gate these kill trackers behind master working. They say, yes, this means master working should no longer be seen as mandatory. We expect the plus 10 to a weapon stat or plus 10 to a primary stat, plus three to other stats for adepts only matter to dedicated PVP players. We have no specific plans for changes to master working at this stage. We'll revisit it later. Following the armor team's footsteps, weapon mods for legendary weapons are now free and insert instantly. Many pain points around special weapons in the Crucible are exacerbated by how easy it currently is to acquire special ammo. And while we've touched this in the past, we're making a further adjustment below. Players now can only drop one special ammo on death, or equivalent, no matter how much they were carrying, as long as they weren't completely empty. The maximum you can pick up off of a special brick is one for a shotgun fusion or sniper, or equivalent for other weapons. Scavenger mods act to this as normal, but we'll be evaluating their place in the Crucible in the future. So, sometimes when you pick up a brick, if they had a lot of ammo, you might get four or five shots. Now it's max two, probably, with a scav mod, one without. They say that players found another way to execute the quick swap glitch. So we found another animation cancel. Archetypes. The season 15 fusion rifle we work had a lot of moving parts. We've definitely seen a lot of fusion rifle subfamilies occupy different roles, and we want to maintain the large differences in charge time to keep these distant. So we're nudging damage up to make it easier for these to land kills at a range in PvP, we're bumping the PvE damage scaler as well. So they increased high impact fusion rifle damage per bolt from 62 to 64. This doesn't seem like a lot, but allows more rolls to cross bolt to kill threshold, so three bolts. They increased high impact fusion rifle PvE damage from 15 to 20%. That's good. They like that the crowd control capabilities of the breach launchers and PvE have taken off, but as it stands, there isn't a meaningful trade-off for the added utility that blinding or concussion grenades give you. So they reduce the blinding and concussion grenade damage by 25%. I don't see any issue with that because you're still blinding them. Rocket launcher subfamilies have lacked meaningful differences for a while now, and now their free tracking precisions are the flat out better options. So we're pushing them a little bit further apart by adjusting damage. We may take a deeper look at rocket launchers later. So it looks like aggressive and adaptive are a little bit higher. Precision and impact are a little bit lower. Well, high impact looks unchanged. We took a big swing at the aim assist for sniper rifles on zoom and beyond light. They're revisiting the tuning on the zoom based AA scaling. Low zoom snipers got more of an aim assist reduction than they needed and high zoom snipers are getting some pretty silly headshots right now. So they reduced the variance in aim assist scaling between low and high sniper rifles. The cone angle scaler increased by around 25% on low zoom. They reduced around 9% on high zoom. Pulse rifles take slightly too long to kill red bar enemies in PVE. We're buffing their damage versus miners by 10%. Exotic weapons. For trace rifles, they increase the damage versus miners by 40%. The chaperone nerf. It's a terror in the crucible. Reduced passive range buff from 2 meters to 0.5. So I wonder what that means. They didn't really talk about Roadborne. Is that when Roadborne's active? Is that just all around? Because it should be about 13 to 14 meters. Duality. They're nerfing that as well. Not as rangy, but they reduce the passive range buff in slug mode from 1.25 meters to 0.5. The pellet mode is unaffected. The on black wings damage buff no longer clears on a reload, so that's pretty cool. Terabah, extremely strong as it is, but it currently demands complete commitment with no weapon switching. This constraint is a bit harsher than it needs to be, so we've loosened it without removing it entirely. Also, while the duration extension when damaging players did actually work in the Crucible, it was so subtle that players kept reporting that it was bugged. So they now reduced perk progress by half instead of clearing it on a weapon stow. They increase Ravenous Beast duration increases for damaging on players slightly. So Terraba, I think has always been great and it just got better. Watch out for Terraba. Ruinous Effigy, back in the day it got nerfed. So they increased the damage dealt by guarding with a Transmutation Sphere by 66%, 30% against players. Transmutation Sphere multi-kills now count for orb generation armor mods. Previously only kills with the beam would trigger that. So that's good. They're buffing Lumina. They increase range from 44 to 59, stability from 46 to 56. It now resembles a 140. Agers, he starts talking about the super regeneration scalers. They fix being able to activate or continually using empowered mode while suppressed or stasis encased. They rebuilt the perk. Used to modify super charge rate, now freezes super recharge and deducts super directly. Fixing several issues with activities that change charge rate and outliers for recharge based on intellect stat. Super should now drain more slowly while empowered. The Dead Man's Tail. 
Feels too good on M and K and controller. We don't want it to go back to it being unreliable. So they reduced the catalyst hip fire rate from 150 to 130. Lorenz driver. One common complaint is how easily they can shoot through flinch. We're keeping an eye on these things moving forward. So they increased the flinch received. That's good. I'm not sure if that's going to fix it. If it goes back to destiny one sniper flinch, then yeah, that's going to fix it. But we'll, we'll see how that goes for the full runner. They increased the ammo pickup from a special ammo brick from two to three and from four to five with a scav mod. That's actually a little bit of a buff. Legendary weapons. This is important. When they changed 150s to 140s, now they're upping the stats. So Dire, Waking Vigil, Jack Queen King, that looks like it's gonna be coming back, Spare Rations, all of those got stat bumps, but they took away the aim assist that the 150s had. That's good. The shot package for Fell Winter, too consistent and lethal compared to other shotguns, so they added a 15% spread angle. Essentially, that might just take away shot package. I think that's what that's doing. That's taking away shot package. The Ikelos SMGs, they're giving them plus one zoom, but taking away range stability and handling and the aim assist. The zoom is more important. Typically, we don't adjust base stats on specific weapons at all post shipment. They don't intend to do this regularly, but these were outliers and I'm okay with that. Perks, they're buffing hip fire again. Now increases damage fall off start and end distance by 20%, except on shotgun snipers and fusion. So things like sidearms are gonna be really good with this, especially something like Fool's Remedy. They're buffing Adagio. They increase the duration from five to seven seconds. They increase the damage bonus, except for bows and fusions, from 25 to 30%. That's a little bit more doable because you can still add on like a minor or a major mod to get a little bit more. Then things with charge with light, you can add up damage with Adagio and it now adds plus 10 to the range stat. So something like a hand cannon with Adagio getting plus 10 to the range stat from 25 to 30, that could be really good. They added a timer to the buff text to make it easier to tell when it's going to expire. Dual loader. They reduce the stat penalty from 50% to 35%. So it's going to be faster. Good. I stay away from that perk now currently. It's going to be better. Danger zone. They reduce the self damage scaler on grenade launchers and combined with the other scalers ends up reducing self damage from 1.25 to 0.75. Tap the trigger. We made an entire video about this. It is a meta breaking perk on a particular fusion rifle. When stacked with other elements of the roll, it makes fusion rifles much too stable. So much so that we stopped putting it on fusion rifles. I knew it. They just stopped doing it. It was too good. And then Squid Face sold it a few times. So that video, when I was talking about tap the trigger and firmly planted, the perks made for fusion rifles. There was They did. There was a reason that they took it off. So when it got shown up again with main ingredient, like it was a must have. They say that they're changing it though without it being overpowered. And it's likely to appear on future fusion rifles. Note, we did try reducing stability from, from plus 40 to plus 20, but a play test, it didn't really work out. So... On fusions only, tap the trigger. Reduce stability bonus from plus 40 to plus 10. And this also gives a look into tap the trigger. It gives plus 40. Change the max recoil angle scaler from 0.5 to 0.875. Change the error angle scale from 0.9 to 0.975. Unchanged on all other weapons. I think it's still gonna be good. It still does give accuracy. It still gives a little bit of stability. I think even more, firmly planted on the other side is gonna be a little bit more beneficial. Interesting note on Headseeker with on how it works with aggressive burst pulse rifles. The only one in the game is Sacred Providence. They say there is a pulse in the season. It's probably a hockey one. It doesn't roll with Headseeker. We do expect to see more in future seasons. So they extended the buff duration from 0.173 to 0.3. Eager's Edge, they do not want it to break the new raid. It isn't meant to remove the fun factor and they don't want you breaking out, getting into challenges quicker or glitching in. So essentially, they reduce the lunge range benefit while airborne by 25% and now caps maximum player airborne velocity to a fairly high value while active. Occasionally, we'll shelve perks, but they're not working for some reason. Too strong, too weak. This means that we're not going to put them on weapons in future seasons unless we change the perk. In many cases, we'd rather put design work into new perks than old ones. But there's a whole perk section here. Anyway, these perks are going to be shelved. They Some have been shelved for a while. Air Assault, it might get a redesign in a future season. Bottomless Grief and Celerity, that perk is bad. Underdog, it is bad. Shield Disorient, it is bad. Well, she, Shield Disorient's okay, actually. It's just not best in slot, so it never gets picked. Season 17, we'll have a set of PvP-focused weapon changes. New ways for players to build for flinch resistance. This is massive. That's a really good thing. Balancing tuning for primary weapons. Looking at you, lightweight pulses. Chattering bone, we're back. Special weapon tuning, like snapshot feeling mandatory on snipers in the Crucible. Other balance changes. Another PvP special ammo economy change, if needed. So this tells me, okay, that 
they they told you what they're doing that this is going to be layered they're going to watch this season only dropping one ammo one round for the shotgun fusion sniper scavenger giving two if it's still out of control i think this shows they have another change in mind on top of that they're kind of attacking it as we go they're going to be adjusting how zoom outliers both low and high affect the performance of a weapon because scope shouldn't be the most important thing on a weapon and i'm okay with that they're also adjusting several much requested exotics along with legendary perks so season 17 appears to be another good one ggs to proctor Weapon cycling, the following weapons will be leaving the ritual reward pools with the launch of Witch Queen on the 22nd. Igneous Hammer, really good hand cannon. Solus Scar, pretty good sword. The Swarm, Shadow Price, Uzume, Hung Jury. Iron Banner, the multi mock Steady Hand, Guiding Sight, Time Worn. A lot of these weapons are great, man, but they're adding in new ones. So we'll see how that goes. So any activity, Iron Banner, Nightfall, Trials, if these show up, be sure to try to get in there. They say that players should make sure to claim all Ingrams and other rewards before the new season. Any rewards not claimed from Ritual Vendors, that's Zavala Shax, Drifter, Saint 14, they're going to be removed at the end of the season. Lots of good things. And uh, they, they did lose one of the German moderators there, Seraphim Crypto. Thank you for everything. You are loved. You are missed. We hope you're able to rest well. We're sending love to your family. This is a massive change coming to Witch Queen. It's changing the way that we play the game. Complete overhaul of the weapon system. Not just crafting. Being able to craft is great. But adding in the little traits. We're going to have new perks. New weapons coming in. Some favorites returning. Exotic nerfs. Like Chaperone. Lawrence Driver. There's a lot going on here. And they say even more changes are going to be coming in Season 17. So, a lot of things that I think that have been talked about over the past year they've been working on so ggs to them this is massive let's talk about it down below thank you for watching and until the next one i am cool guy